What's up guys, it's Punchy, and we're back with another crazy Deep Oaken update, introducing things that we haven't seen for a very long time. With some new additions and changes to things that we already know, this patch is one of the best that we've got for a while now. I'm excited to get into things, but as always, make sure to try out everything for yourself before you do anything else. Let's begin. Starting off strong, we received a whole new monster to fight that's honestly super cool with a special different variant perfect for both endgame and early game players. Introducing the Mudskipper Brute. This monster spawns in the overworld where you would normally find Mudskippers and he's definitely something special. With a Coral Parasite big body design as well as full 360 degree detection, this thing is pretty scary. Lumbering towards the player, this monster does heavy damage with multiple different attacks. The Mudskipper Brute has a normal high damage M1 that hurts a lot, an unblockable punch that punishes blocking players, an unblockable knockdown lead to chase far away players, and finally a special roar that does multiple things. If any type of enemy is nearby the roaring mob, all of those enemies will then aggro onto the player, but if there's no nearby enemies, the roar will instead spawn Mudskippers. Now, that was the Mudskipper Brute, but here's the depths version the Mudskipper Broodlord. With a darker, purple design, this thing is even crazier compared to the basic. Its attacks are very similar to the original Brute, but its damage and special M1s stand apart. The only exclusive move difference for the Broodlord is a special throw that slams a Mudskipper into the player. It's pretty crazy, I'm not gonna lie. Most, if not all of the moves from the Broodlord deal double damage, and seriously, this hurts. Alongside bonus damage, every single attack applies an anti-heal effect that punishes players who just want to stat check or tank monsters. Seriously, if you don't play well against the Mudskipper Broodlord, you won't be healing anything after killing it. From both of these mobs, they can both drop the Coral Cestus, a special weapon that looks exactly like the Brute's Coral. This weapon has a decently high light requirement with similar stats to our endgame fist options. The M1s are basically the same, but to make it stand apart, they're critical for the Coral Cestus resembles that of the Brood's Leap. It's pretty decent as a fun drop from the new mob with a cool new critical. Besides this, we have also received some new cosmetic items, some of my absolute favorite in all of Deep Woken. Have you ever wanted to carry more loot or style something crazy? Well, these items are just for you. The Pathfinder's Backpack is a new cosmetic item taking up your scarf or torso slot that has a lot of use. This option looks and works fairly simply, but simple goes a long way when building your character. With a cool design and super easy die capability, you can rock this with whatever outfit you like alongside this backpack. As you can see, I got the Dora backpack on lock. Anyway, what's unique about this item is the specialization in carry weight. With a bonus plus 35 carry weight, we instead trade a small bit of HP stats to carry more loot. The counterpart to the Pathfinder's backpack is the Grand Pathfinder's backpack. Acting fully as a direct upgrade, this item grants a bonus of plus 50 carry weight with a darker design as well. Both options look very cool and I'll definitely pick up one of these to finalize my character. If you want to farm this item, both drop from Aresia chests, so head on out and get to hunting. Another awesome change, which players have been asking for time and time again, has come to all gun weapon types. In this update, both one-handed, two-handed rifles, and dual guns have received running attacks. Previously, no firearm weapons in Deep Oaken had any running attack which prevented up close pressure and made firing shots back to back to back possible with some very precise inputs. Of course now, this has been changed. The one-handed running attack functions as a backhand, slamming your target with your chosen gun. Dual guns get much of the same with a similar animation running attack. The new rifle running attacks are comparable to the original original melee M1, a basic bash with a rifle stock. Regardless, I'm happy that this weapon type finally functions the same as any other option. Since we're still on the topic of weaponry, this might be a great time to bring up the new and improved Railblade. As mentioned last week, this weapon lost its legendary rank and received the ability to become enchanted. I really enjoy how this weapon works in combat, especially with enchants, but its appearance was a bit lacking 
lighting compared to other options. Without displaying the correct particles and colors for enchants, yeah, it was a bit strange. In this patch, this has changed, allowing the Railblade its enchant drip that it fully deserves. Feel free to experiment with different options because anything looks good using the new and improved Railblade model. Besides this, it's also been optimized for lower end PCs, so your performance may improve from before. Something I really wasn't expecting was the beneficial changes to Voidwalker progression as well as Voidwalker loot. In this update, Voidwalker attribute training has been multiplied by 3. All EXP gained for attributes is 3 times as fast compared to before, and alongside this, 4 star and 5 star bounties are now guaranteed to drop at least 1 star loot, which was way better than before. Flipping this around, if you defeat Voidwalkers around a certain level, you too will receive better drops. Realistically, it's not a giant deal, but if players can progress and gain loot faster, I appreciate any change coming this way. On to balancing, there's a few different changes to explore before we wrap things up. An interesting talent, one of the strongest in all of Deepwoken, I guess, Joltcast is a talent that changes mantra windup. Essentially, after hitting three perfectly casted mantras, you know, and one before you cast, the next mantra hit would come out faster, which is very powerful. For some inexplicable weird reason, Jolt Cast was happening after one perfect cast mantra instead of three, cutting down the windup on every single thunder mantra. Surprisingly, this has been happening for a while now and it's finally been fixed. So rest in peace thunder call mantras, but seriously, they're not doomed at all. This is still very good. Besides these changes, there's also been a strange announcement or poll in the last few days that I do want to talk about. After the crazy success of the OG original Sharko plush, the Deep Oaken team has proposed another vote with three different options. The Deep Owl, Thresher, and Duke Aresia are all on the table for plushification, and the community has voted for the Duke. I don't know if we'll get an actual plush version of Duke Aresia, but it is something worth bringing up. So later this weekend, I'll also be testing around with the Sharko, so keep an eye out for that. Anyway, that's all for right now, but check out Battle Royale with your squad in the meantime. Conquest is still being worked on daily with crazier additions every single time, but we gotta still wait. That's it. If you enjoy exclusive update content just like this, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and let's aim for 85k subs. Have a good one, it's punching time.